sense, but here we go. So do me a favor, guys, just a reminder, okay? Um, you know, turn your cameras on if you can. It's great to see everybody always. Um, if you could mute yourself, if you've got any background noise, just know that we'll hear it. I'll kind of monitor that as we're going. But um, appreciate you guys getting on here. Of course, just a reminder, we do this every Tuesday. Um, you know, different trainings, different masterminds. It's open to any agent, any company. You can invite them in here. Um, always good content and stuff. The more agents, the better. More discussion, the better. So, um, you know, participate, okay? That's what's going to make this thing work. And you've all got ideas, so uh, throw them out. There's no, there's no bad question. There's no dumb question. There's no dumb idea, okay? Let us know what's working for you. So, anyway, I appreciate uh, my buddy Nick getting on here. So, Nick and I have been working together now for a few months and yeah. been helping me a ton as far as just social media, um, using video. Um, he's working with what, like over 8,000 agents right now, all yes, together, sir. you know, in, in your groups that you're, you know, working with, um, you know, just some direct clients. He's just helping a ton of people. And, uh, you know, video is the name of the game right now. I'm just telling you, if you haven't used video and you're kind of holding back on using video in any way with your, you know, real estate business, with your social media stuff, um, it's something to really be digging into. It's not as hard as you think it is. And the more you, the more you do it, the easier it gets. So anyway, Nick, I'm going to turn it over to you, man. Go ahead and tell a little bit of your story, what you're doing, and, uh, yeah. and we'll kick it in here, man. I appreciate your time. Thank no, you. I appreciate you having me on here, Jeff. You know, I always love seeing your content, what you're producing, you know, just to see it from checking the timeline before and to where you're at now, man, it's just taking immense strides, and it's just been with that consistent action. Yeah, and just so it. everybody knows, this isn't going to be your typical training. I'm not going to speak for 45 minutes and say any questions at the end, right? So what I'm going to do I'm going to let you guys know now. I'll introduce myself here in a minute. But after I'm done, I'm going to ask each individual, what are you struggling with with either video and social media and how can we help you, right? So I want to hear one thing that's holding you back, whether it's from doing video, taking it to the next level, or a question that you have. So I'm going to give you guys ample time. If nobody raises their hand, we're just going to start doing the popcorn method here. But yeah, a little bit about me. You know, I started my own business about four years ago. And in that time, I've been able to grow it into 13 countries in all 50 states using organic video strategies and social media. I wish I could say $0 in ads, but I spent $200 on that ads once. And I'm like, yeah, that's not my game. So essentially all through organic video content and social media, we've been able to grow our business because we help agents do it the simple way. We provide simple solutions and not shiny objects. We give you exactly what you need to do and nothing more. I like to call it the minimal effective dose. Because at the end of the day, you guys are real estate agents. You guys aren't here to become social media gurus and experts and buy all the courses and become experts in that end. That's what people hire me for. Because I tell you exactly what you need, nothing more, so you guys can go do what makes you money. Sell more homes or help people get into them. All right? So with that being said, I'm going to open up the floor. I want to take questions, and that will help us spark some ideas and be able to keep this call moving forward. So I need your guys' help here. So guys, what questions do you have? Um, regarding social media or video. Mm. All right. Well, I gave you guys some time here. Let's go with my man, TJ. TJ, what's going on, man? Unmute. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing with video currently and what you would like some help with. I'm not doing much of anything, unfortunately. I, I, uh, I'm scared of it. Yeah. I don't like hearing myself. I don't like seeing myself. I guess it's yeah. just one of those things. I've done a couple TV shows with our lender, just some, <laughs> some stuff a couple years ago, but uh, every time I get in there, I just get antsy about it and get away from it. Absolutely, man. I, I don't think anybody likes what they look like or what they sound like, but the trick is the number one enemy of all videos is the play button. Never hit the play button. I'm telling you, it never ends well, whether it's sending a video text, whether it's your Facebook, your videos. And a lot of times what happens is when we want to edit the videos or we send it to an editor and they take out all the mistakes, right? And then it's a pristine, perfect video. Well, who here on this call is perfect? Exactly. And we can't relate to it. It makes you less relatable and it makes it seem like you're too perfect. So if I had a question about real estate, am I going to re reach out to the guy who is perfect and pristine or the guy who's like me and makes some mistakes and is more relatable? Right. So chances are what we're editing out and what we're taking out of the videos are the exact reason people reach out to us. I like to say the imperfection is the connection, right? So for me, I'll tell you what, the thing that got me over being the, over the fear is doing mass amounts of interviews. The reason I like doing interviews is because I ask four questions and I look like an expert. 
If I stop talking, there's somebody else there to pick it up. I interview people I'm already comfortable talking to and are comfortable on camera. And eventually that got me into doing video a lot more. So for me, I'll tell you what, I remember my first live, I just wrote a book called The Community Champ. And I thought, man, I could go live and do this in my sleep. And then the lights went on, the camera's on. I was like, holy crap. And I started venturing off into left field. I don't remember what the live was about, but it was about 15 minutes long. And I don't even think I mentioned the book. But then I started doing interviews with people who are very comfortable. And eventually I, be I built that muscle, right? So for me, my, my biggest tips on that would be, do not watch the video. No matter what video you shoot, don't go back and watch it. And on top of that too, the best interviews to start doing are the best videos to start doing are interviews. Gotcha. And it also holds me accountable. Because if I get in somebody's calendar and say, I'm going to interview you, I'm like, even if I don't want to do it, I'm like, man, I don't want to waste their time. I don't want to back out on their time. So it holds me accountable to make sure I do it as well. I like it. Hope that helps, TJ. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Guys, go, go ahead and unmute. What do you guys got? What questions do you have to take your video and your content to the next level? I have two things. What's up, Julia? Hey. So I don't do them often because every time I try to do a live, no matter what I do, I look terrible, I sound <laughs> terrible, and yeah. people on the internet are mean. No shit. So I don't need more mean girls in my life. The other thing that stops me is once I start talking, right. it's like squirrel. Right. So I don't know what to say, when to cut it off. Just give me the facts, man. But right. I don't know what the facts are that people are looking for. So I'm fearful of mean people right. and don't know what the heck to say. So no, that, that brings up a good point. You know, um, yeah, there are some mean people on the internet. There's a lot of them, but there's also a lot of good people. Anytime you see somebody hating on a video, you will always see more people come into love on it and vice versa. If everybody's loving the video, you'll also get some haters with it too. And it usually tends to even out. Something that I would recommend doing too, if you don't like what you look like and what you sound like, you're probably just like everybody else on this call. Something that got me over it too and got more people liking what I was doing is Google the top 10 most interesting places in your city and go and shoot your videos there. Because now people are like, whoa, that's so cool. They're checking out the background. They're looking at what you're doing. They're not even looking at you, right? So chances are that got me over the fair. I'm like, okay, they're looking at the background. I got some cool things. And one of the hardest things to do is get people to stop the scroll and watch the video. So if you shoot your videos there, I believe that was tend to knock out some of the haters. You're in a cool place. It looks like you're doing cool things and you'll have more people commenting about how cool what you're doing is. As far as having the idea for the video and making sure you cut it off, what I like to always do is I have three talking points. If I'm doing a live and I'm doing it by myself, I have three talking points. I type my three talking points in the description and I read it four or five times before I go live. I'm like, all right, that's my live. That's what I'm going to do talking points right here. I read it four or five times and boom, then I go live and I stick to them. I don't like having a script. I, I personally hate scripts. I don't think they work or are effective. They make us robotic. And I always say, I can't fuck up a script that I don't have. If I don't have a script, I can't mess it up. And then if I say a word that I wasn't supposed to, then I start fumbling over my words, then I start getting distracted. And then I lose track of what I was even gonna say. If I just specific talking points, it gives me the ability to mess up and continue to move on. Great questions, Julia. Julia, you know what? Let's make this fun. Do you guys remember the game Popcorn in School? Julia, why don't you call on somebody I mean, else? seriously, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Pop, what? In, I don't even remember school. That was like ah, 35 fair enough. years so ago. It, it, here's how you play the game. Now, Julia, you pick on somebody else to ask a question about their social media or video me pick on somebody else yes, okay man. well i mean this is like shooting fish in a barrel because tara holland is on here and she's on this my, my TV. <laughs> <laughs> tim is on here but he's too polished so tara i knew that was coming you don't post i saw you you right when videos. i said that tara you pointed at yourself <laughs> I, I, knew, yeah. I knew it was coming um i've only done very few videos myself um right. You know, I, I, I learned very early on, don't listen to it, just send it and move on, yeah. which is very hard too. But um, I guess more or less, I don't do it so much because I don't know what 
content to use or to say or how to get the most interaction and you know dialogue going with people uh, right. interviewing someone else is a phenomenal idea but if you're not going to go that route what are some of the topics right. that you've used or done that have just generated you the most great question. Um, communication and you know what i had a slide pull up uh jeff can i go ahead and share my screen no, that, that is a phenomenal question because the interviews I love because, you know, I don't have to think about the topics. I bring somebody on and they're an expert and you're able to roll those out. But it also does, uh, it is very effective to be able to shoot your own. So here we go. Can you guys see my screen? Now can you? There we go. So going over these different topics. So this is a list. If you guys want to take a screenshot, go ahead. I'll make sure I admit people here too, Jeff. Uh, so if you guys want to take a screenshot, but th these are some of the different topics to cover. What is it that you do? I know it might sound basic, but getting granular and telling people exactly what you do in this process, and you got to keep reminding them, right? We got to remember people live an entire lives outside of what we're doing. If we tell them we're a real estate agent once and expect them to remember in eight or nine months, this is what happens when a friend or family member goes with another agent. It's not because they didn't want to go with you. You just weren't that first agent they thought of. And in reality, whose fault is that, right? It's our responsibility. It's our obligation to keep reminding them. And the, one of the best ways is through social media. I don't believe we should call them every month and be like, hey, guess what, Jeff? What's that, Nick? I'm still a realtor. Call me if you need me. But on social media, it's a constant reminder to stay top of mind. I always say the most valuable piece of real estate is the real estate in someone's mind. Because when they think of a real estate agent and they think of you, that's what winning looks like. So coming down here, what is cool about what you do? I'll tell you what, just think about, think about the job of a real estate agent for a second. Traveling around the city, going into different homes, going into different parts of the city, probably places that you've never been before. And most people go to the same job every single day, same desk, the same place to eat. Just the average day of what we do is far beyond what most people do. So even just taking pictures, taking snaps, taking stories about the different parts of town and different places that you eat is something that can get people interested in what you're doing. This one right here, biggest mistakes clients do. So I want to cover that one for a second because these videos are great because I love residual money and I love residual content, right? Residual content are ones that I can continue to use even after they've been posted. So let, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Tara. So when you're working with the buyer, what are some of the biggest mistakes buyers do in the process of getting a home? <laughs> Buy something before they're going to get fully financed. <laughs> yes. And I see other people laughing too. And shoot it up. I'll tell you what. Top three videos, like top three things not to do before buying a home. Top three, top five, top 10. Doing videos like that, it has great SEO for YouTube. But on top of that, too, every time you're working with a buyer, you can now send them a customized video. Hey, I shot this video. I want to go ahead and send it over to you. Top three things not to do when buying a home. Look, if it even eliminates one person from doing that and you get a closing, is it worth the video? Absolutely. Absolutely. And every time you work with a new buyer, you're able to send it to them. Another video that I highly recommend or like a series, top three neighborhoods to live in in Orlando, Florida. And you want to choose places that have a good turnover rate too, right? And a price point that you want. But top three places to live in a city, it's a great SEO again. But then think about this. When you're working with buyers and they want to get into a neighborhood, like, hey, I actually just shot a video on that neighborhood. Go ahead and check it out. Oh, you're moving to this area? Here are the top three places that I recommend. So those videos, number one, they do great on social media, but you can continue to use them as you continue to grow. And now you just made yourself different from every other realtor. Great question, Tara. I hope that helps. Why don't you go ahead and pick on somebody else here? All right, I'm going with camera people only. So Ronnie, Ronnie White. Ronnie, Ronnie. <laughs> I knew she was gonna pick me. I knew it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how's it going guys? I'm brand new to EXP, I am. Uh, I, I think it's been a week now, so I'm um, loving everything that I'm getting. I just wanted to say that first. I do videos. Um, 
I think that I maybe could use some kind of insight as to how often, how long, because what I kind of do is and I'm doing videos. I actually said 2022, I'm going to start doing videos, Facebook posting, because I never did it previously. So, and um, I've actually gotten a lot of traction. I did a video when um, the feds increased the interest rates in March, additional video when I came privy to some information from a loan officer about down, down payment assistance program. Nice. So I traction. I have a couple of clients potential that are going through the process of bring, being pre-approved. Yeah. However, um, I'm like everyone else. Um, I want to connect, but then I also hesitate. I got to have a haircut before I do a video, you know, it's going to be <laughs> right. If, if I'm in my car, how do I set my phone up? You know, all of that, but which is, I mean, honestly, I can get past that, but what I would like, um, some insight on is how long should, what's like the honey hole for the, you know, for the video and how often meaning once a week, twice a week or right. what happened. What, what's so, kind of. So my answer is not going to be the typical one. Because what most gurus and these people do is they want to sell you a course and they make it so specific on the times, the amount of time, the how long it has to be. And guess what? The algorithm just changed. So you got to buy the new course to figure out what to do next, right? So are there some better times? Maybe. But here's what I know. The way the algorithms work on any platform is like this. If your video or your content keeps them on the platform, they'll keep you at the top. They don't care what it is. They don't care if it's a picture. They don't care if it's a post, a video. Do some perform better? Yes. But the one that gets the most interaction is the one that's going to stay at the top. Why? Because they get paid by ads. So if my content keeps them on the platform, they can run more ads. So as far as the length of the video, a lot of times we spend so much time worrying about the length, where if I post at 6 a.m., noon, 8 p.m., midnight, I'm going to beat somebody who just posted once. Now, I'm not saying you got to post four times a day. Here are the questions that most people ask. How long or how many? When the answer is, well, let's see. How long and how many times a week? And the real answer is there's never enough. There's no, there's no bad time to post. There's no bad length. For us, we did a mastermind, a virtual mastermind. And we had it be nine hours long. Everybody was telling us, oh, you shouldn't be able to do that. Oh, you should make it 30 minutes. You should make it an hour. And it was right when COVID hit. You're not going to have anybody's attention. And we had 10,000 agents tune in and the average watch time was six and a half hours out of all those agents. Why? Because uh, the content was good. Has anybody here seen the movie Endgame? Endgame Marvels? Oh, a couple of people here. So it was like a two and a half, three hour movie. Man, I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. And I, like, I didn't see anybody get up and leave the theater because it was too long of a movie. So a lot of times when we're trying to really shorten our videos, what it does is it takes time, energy, and effort to try and come up with the perfect length and then edit a video and then reshoot it because I thought it was too long. When in reality, if you would have just shot three videos and posted all of them, you would have had a better chance of just them posting that one perfect video. So for me, I, I never think about how long the video is. If I have an idea, I go ahead and shoot it. I continue to shoot more and more videos. Because then it gets into the fun space when you shoot so many videos, which Jeff's experiencing now too, like I am, because then you can start repurposing them. Taking the videos that you shot and making one minute clips, 30 second clips, and having somebody go in there and do it for you. Don't recommend you go in and do it yourself. But when you post so many, you will get more business. When you get more business, you can invest back into it. So my, the, my simple answer is there's never enough video and I don't worry about what, how long or what time I'm posting. If I have an idea, I'm shooting a video, I'm posting it. That's the quickest way. Because if not, then I'm waiting two days to make the right post. And if I missed 8 a.m. and it was 8.05, this happened to me so many times. It'd be like 8.06. I'm like, dang it, they all told me to post at 8 a.m. I'll post it tomorrow. And the next day I got to 8.10. I'm like, dang it, missed it again. I'll post tomorrow. When in reality, I should have posted at 8.06, 8.10, and 8 a.m. the next day. So for me, all I know is the algorithm, if I, if I keep entertaining people, they'll keep me at the top. Does that help answer your question a little bit? It does. Yep. Awesome, Ronnie. All right, appreciate the question. Why don't you go ahead and pick on somebody else here, Ronnie? I'm going to pick on Kim Herrera. 
Well, I was going to suggest that there's a question in the chat from Julia. Okay. She wants to know where the best place to post is. Uh, whichever one you do consistently. You know, um, there really isn't a better one. I know people are like, swear by TikTok. I think it's pretty good. Swear by Instagram. We have success there. Swear by YouTube. We have success there. All I know is the one that you post consistently on is the one that's going to grow, right? Different platforms have a little, all the algorithms are the same. They might have to heart now. You might have to share now. You might have to do these things. But if your content entertains them, they can run ads and they'll keep you at the top. So for me, um, a great tool, highly recommend everybody here gets it, StreamYard. StreamYard.com allows you to stream to Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn at the same time. It also allows you to have graphics on the screen. So now you don't have to pay a graphic editor or video editor every time. And like Jeff just did too, then you could download it as an audio and upload it as a podcast. So now in a matter of 20 minutes, you could have a video on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn and a podcast on four to five major platforms. I'll go ahead and type in the chat here for you guys. Yeah, streamyard.com. It's awesome, guys. Um, yeah. you know, and when he talks about doing interviews, like that is an easy way to come up with content. Just you, like Terry, you could pick, a, you know, just one of the agents on your team. You could pick another agent in town. It doesn't even have to be with EXP. Just, you know, it, it could be anything, but just yeah. talking about the market, you could interview your lender. You know, I've done that. Yeah, you know, I've made a note here as we were talking because I'm like, I haven't done that for a while. I need to do that, you know? Go to the lender with all the stuff going on with the rates right now. Just take 10 minutes and go live with him on Facebook, yeah. LinkedIn, and YouTube through StreamYard and interview my lender and just let's talk about the current market. What's going on? What are you seeing? You know, where do you see this going? You know, how's it been for your business? You know, are you seeing a pullback on things? Just how many buyers haven't been able to qualify now? Well, you know, just talking about the market and just put that out there, you know, whatever. And then I could take that video if I wanted to. And now again, here's like leads coming in, you know, to websites, you know, buyer leads, that kind of stuff. I could start yeah. sending them some of these videos that I've got. You're positioning yourself as the expert. Right. That's who they see you are. Nobody else is doing that. You know, they're, they're going to five different realtors websites and you become the one that all of a sudden you start sending them a, a video, top three mistakes not to make as a buyer. Tara, you do that video one time and a year later, you're still sending that video out to new new leads that are coming in. The, you know, it just puts you in another position to where they're going to work with you over the other realtors that they're they're reaching out to. You're setting yeah. yourself apart. Am I right on that, Nick? I mean, that's, no, that's you're you're absolutely right, Jeff. And that's like something easy to do. Every two weeks, interview your lender and give people a market update. Send out to past clients, current clients, leads and nurtures. Sure. And like you said, Jeff, most agents probably don't even send anything. Some agents might send an article. And guess what? Most people aren't going to read it. They probably won't understand it. And guess who's the authority in the article? The person who wrote it. Yeah. Very few, very, very few might send a video about the market, about what's going on in it. Nobody's sending a video, a market update that's personally done by them every two weeks. Because guess who becomes the expert in their mind? The person giving them the information, the person that they see. When they have a question, who are they going to reach out to? The agent who sent them an article that they didn't read or the one they've been getting information on on the market? There are two key lines that I always say in those videos too, which I believe help a lot. The one, two things I always say are, if you're a buyer, this is what the market means to you. If you're a seller, this is what the market means to you. I like to, I like to bring up this reference from Friends. I'm sure some people here saw Friends before, but there was this one episode where this guy comes over to Joey's to try and sell him almanacs. He's like, Joey, have you ever been in a room and everybody's talking about something and you have no idea what it's about? You just have to smile and nod. And they just go to all these flashbacks of him smiling and nodding in all these rooms. That's what happens when we talk about real estate sometimes. We start talking about the market absorption rate. I mean, that's great. And those are great numbers to know. But if you could break it down in a way to say, hey, guys, if you're looking to buy right now, this is what it means to you. The person that becomes the most, the person that people understand are the ones they're going to go to with questions. But yeah, that's a great point, Jeff. It just those two, vid those two videos a month, We'll be able to go out to past clients, current clients, leads and nurtures, be able to interview a mortgage lender and just talk about the market, talk about the rates and what's going on. In it. You could interview a home inspector. Yeah. First time buyers have no idea of the process, you know, and just do a 20 minute interview of the home inspector. Tell, you know, and, yeah. and the importance of getting a home inspection and just, you know, go off of that. You know, there's so many things you could do like that even. And just, again, right. that video will last you for, you know, five years. You're still using that video. 
Right. That's I'll the power you, of doing it where you just, you get the life out of that thing. It's, it's good. You know? So uh, Julie had another question in there too. I saw in the chat, you know, like a mix of personal real estate or what should it be? First of all, everyone should only have one page and it's your person, like your personal page is where you should be posting. Unless you're running ads, the business page is the paid version of the, of the app. If you run ads, you got to do it through your business. If you're not running an ad, post on your personal. The way I like to look at it is everybody's a client. Some just aren't paying me yet. Some just aren't using me yet. Everybody out there is a potential client or knows somebody who could be a potential client. And it is a good, healthy mix. Here's how I look at my brand. My name is at the top. Everything is always personally branded under my name. Why? Because when people Google it, do I know I'm Googling your favorite realtor? Who's going to pop up, right? Or like whatever tagline that you have, it might be great. But when they Google it, are they going to find you and you only? When they Google my name and real estate agent, they find me every single time. So I always brand under my name. But then I have pillars of the brand, which is real estate, which is shooting video, which is my personal life, which is my family. And I constantly mix it up because real estate is what we do. It's not who we are. And chance, people buy us for who we are. Sometimes people ask me, it's like, well, what if somebody doesn't like my hobbies? What if somebody doesn't like what I do? What if somebody doesn't, somebody was an artist? Like, yeah, what if somebody just doesn't like my art? I'm like, then chances are you won't get along with them that well anyways, right? Has anyone here ever had to fire a client? Yeah, chances are it was a good feeling. It freed up your time, energy, and effort for the right client to come along. If you post more things about what you like, you're going to become a little polarizing. But guess what? People are going to love you and some people aren't. And the people who aren't are probably people you didn't want to work with anyways. Right? So I think that was a great question, uh, Julia. Let's see. Who was the last one to ask a question, though? I think it was Tara. So well, Tara. I called on Ronnie White, but he left. So I can call uh, on someone else. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll resort back to you, Tara. What, what uh, popcorn somebody else here? Uh, let's go with Sandra. Sandra. Hi. Um, I really don't use Facebook personally. So should I use my business and should I boost the post on my business page to draw more attention to it? So you don't use it currently. Um, do you not use it at all? Or do you not at use all. it for business? I use it for business, but not for personal reasons. Okay. Um, so are you against posting on your personal page? Or are you just that's not a, that's I'm not just a option. private person and I just don't like posting. Okay. <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. I mean, we all have our preferences um, to what it is. I do but, post on my business every day and I just right. don't know. I mean, I've done videos and I've boosted the post to get attraction to it. And I right. don't know if that's the right way to do it. Well, I, I get you have your reasons. The right way to do it. We, this is what I recommend. This is the only way I boost is I test everything out on my personal page and whatever gets the most views and likes is the one my audience likes. And then I boost yeah. that because I never want to test with money on an audience. I want to be able to test it for free and have my audience decide, here's the video I like. And then I go and boost that one. Okay. Right? So that, that's, that's the best way that I found to boost that. Like if you want to do boosting is you, you test it first and whichever one people like, comment, start commenting. Because I can't tell you some videos that I thought would blow up. They didn't do anything. Okay. Some videos I almost didn't post and they blew up. So, you know, sometimes you just got to let your audience decide what they like and be able to boost it from there. All right. All right, Sandra, go ahead and call on somebody else here. Uh, let's go with Nicole. Nicole. Nicole, you with us? You're muted. Uh, oh, yes. and you had a camera the whole time. What? All right, go <laughs> ahead. What questions do you have? Sorry, I'm I'm dog sitting right now. Um, um, so right now, um, I'm just I'm kind of not doing video right now. I mean, I'm active on my Facebook, but right now at the moment, I'm just not doing video right now. Um, just I'm not against it or anything, but eventually, um, I would like. I mean, I I did videos here in I think a while back. Um, yeah. and. At first, it was kind of scary um, because I I felt like watching. I always watch myself all the time, <laughs> um, but then um, I just thought it was just ridiculous, like watching myself every time. So I got over that hump. But 
eventually I wanted to get, do get back into doing videos. But when I first did it, I, I did, um, I didn't do Facebook lives. I just like, like, I mean, I, I would just post video, like videos on my Facebook story. So that's yeah. how I got into it. So, but yeah, I, I thought it, I, I definitely, um, to get back into that. And I also did that through Facebook. Um, I also did that when I messaged people on Facebook messenger, I think yeah. you can do that as well. So um, if you need, if you're scared to do it on the Facebook story or Facebook live, it's always good to do it on Facebook, on someone personally on Facebook messenger too, because that helped me a lot as well. Yeah, I know that is definitely a good way. And I definitely, I would recommend saying their name in it. If you're going to shoot it to them personally, always say their name in it. But let me ask you this. What, what's holding you back from getting started today and shooting a video today and posting on your timeline? Um, on my time is spent right now in post. I have, I'm, I'm licensed here in California, but oh. I'm also, I'm also, um, yeah, but I'm, I'll, I also moved out of, I moved, I moved out of California. I'm studying for my real estate license in Nevada. I'm living in Las Vegas right now. So I'm kind of, a lot of my time is kind of devoted to that. I know I'm, <laughs> Hey, I mean, you can tell yourself that, but there's always time to shoot a video. It takes about two minutes, maybe even 30 seconds to go live and shoot a video, right? Yeah. So like, I think it comes down to being, just being consistent. Yeah. You know, I mean, like it's just being- Yeah, I, I, I do fall flat on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. No, I'm with you. That's, that's something where most people struggle with is just the consistency of it. You know, and for me, sometimes it's even just having a two minute time block. In my, if I have it in my calendar, I'm going to do it. Okay. Just having a time block to my day, like once or twice a week, three times a week, little time box in the calendar. I have my cameraman who lives with us full time now too. So we have a time block days. We're going to just knock out massive amounts of content. When I didn't have that, I would have time box in my day. So no matter what, I have non-negotiables with the calendar. So no, I get it. Like we're all busy. Everybody on this call is busy, right? We're in real estate. Like that's, that's the industry. So we're really busy. And it's making sure that we're doing things that are going to continue to produce business for us and income producing activities. Video is an income producing activity if you do it consistently. No, I'm with you though. The consistency is a big one, Nicole. Why don't you go ahead and pick on somebody else here? Um, okay, let's see. Um, uh, Mike Parsley. Are you there? Hello. How you doing? What's going on? Hey, Mike. Excuse my dog in the background there. <laughs> well, I have not used video. And I guess, number one, every other one of my friends on Facebook or whatever, either realtors or some type of entrepreneur. So it just seems so oversaturated for one thing. And the other, I have a problem. When I'm in front of a client or a customer or somebody, I, I, I can interact with them. They, they have yeah. facial expressions. There's, there's something real there yeah. for me to talk to and, and be able to feel from whatever. And, but you got this piece of plastic in front of you. I don't know right. what to do. It's just, I, I, who am I talking to? What am I supposed to say? What am I, you know, I like the idea of doing interviews and we've, I've talked with my team members about doing that before um but just random video it's like i don't know what to do i just right i come up with an idea and then i'm like oh it's already been done yeah so i just don't do it well uh, yeah no i'm definitely with you there and there's no such thing as an original idea really with video there's a good chance it was a ripped off from something else it's similar to something else you know there's i remember uh, i was i was going through my mentors videos it was back in like i i had a whole series when i first started doing videos it was called win the day right and it was hashtag win the day and I was running with it. And I was going through my, uh, one of my mentors videos and it was like 2004. He had hashtag win the day on the board in the same color and like the same font. I'm like, no shit. I sent it over to him. I'm like, I guess you did it first. He's like, dude, there's no such thing as an original idea. Right. And that, that's when it hit me because uh, there really isn't. Chances are the best type of video to do is one that someone was already successful with. <laughs> Why? Because it was already successful. There's nothing saying you don't get paid more to figure out the problems by yourself. You don't get paid more to come up with your own video ideas. Mm -hmm. If I get more views, more interaction with somebody else's video that I ripped off, it's not even ripping off. It's just copying success habits, right? So if it's not an agent, even if it's an agent in your area, look, it's videos, it's content. It's been done probably 50 times before them too. If somebody says, I shot that first, I would just say, check your ego dog. Probably shot 50, 100 times before you, right? right. As far as like the good ideas, I'll tell you what, 
People run from problems. They walk towards solutions. So when we come on here and tell people all these ways that we can help them, and they're like, all right, great. That's there when I need it. But when you can nail the problems that people face, that's mm-hmm. when they're like, crap. That, that is what I'm looking at right now, right? When gotcha. you're saying, hey, when you're, real, when, you're, when, you're five, when you're six months out from looking at a house, you actually should have started looking two months ago. When mm-hmm. you're four months out, you actually should have started it at this point. Here's what will happen when it gets closer and closer. More time strain. You're going to get more stressful. You probably, already are, you probably already are feeling stressed out about this entire process. And the longer you wait, the more stressed out you'll be. And chances mm-hmm. are that dream home that you really want is not going to be there. Here's what we're going to do for you. Go ahead and schedule a call and reach out to me. We'll get you more information. Because chances are, there's someone out there right now who's like three months out and think that they have time. They feel the stress. The time's coming back on them. And now you're telling them they're not going to get their dream home. Crap, I got to reach out to this guy. Right? So to me, if you could just nail people's problems or just even the problems that you face as a real estate agent every day, people love knowing that other people have problems too. Why do you think the news is all filled with it, right? They do their research. They know what people want. But if you nail the problems of consumers, that's when, you, that's when somebody says, a video was just speaking to me. Wow, they were speaking right to me. Chances are they were telling you exactly the problems and things you were going through in your life. We always say 85% problem, 15% solution. I give you all the solution. You're like, great. I got all the information. I'm good to go. I don't need to reach out to him. He just gave me what I needed. Nail the problem and you'll get people reaching out to you. Hope that out, Mike. Why don't you go ahead and pick on somebody else here, Mike? So we got. How about Sean? Stir it. about Sean? Did, did I mispronounce your name? If I did, I'm sorry. Uh, you're close, brother. Stirrock. It's all Stirrock. good. Okay. Rock and roll, brother. Very good. Yeah, Nick, I'm, I'm just getting started with you, you and your company. So I'm excited about it. I've done just a oh, couple go. videos. I'm going to start my interviews probably the week after next. I don't want to go into excuses. Just got a ton of stuff I'm knocking out over the next week and a half. But no, no, so I'm, I'm here as a sponge, man. I'm, I'm ready to do it. I got to be honest, a little bit, a little nervous, not so much of the interviews of yeah. doing my own videos. Yeah, I've yeah, yeah. Stuff about it and I kind of get the idea, find some out there that other people have done, watch yeah. it four, five, six times, get it figured out and kind of just reshoot it yourself. So I'm here just going through the learning phase, man. I've been watching you from afar here the last couple months. Impressed. I see what Jeff's doing. I Impressive. And I know it's something I've got to do yeah. or I'm going to get left in the dust. So here, just learning, man, about ready to start kicking it in. Man, you, you bring up a good point. I appreciate you saying that too. But you bring up a good point. Uh, usually when I speak, I have this meme uh, uh, on, this, uh, on the slideshow, right? And this meme, it's, uh, what was it? Joaquin Phoenix, is that how you say his name? Joaquin Phoenix, the, the dude who played the Joker in the Joker movie. Yeah. yeah. And he's sitting there in his Nike sweats with his full makeup on, and he's looking in the mirror. And it says, me going to work at nine to five while there's an eight-year-old YouTuber making $26 million a year. So it's basically you looking like a clown when this kid, this kid opens up toys on YouTube and he plays with them and he gives it a review. That kid's making $26 million a year while his family is, right? Because he started doing video on YouTube. But here's how it applies to real estate. The next five years, if you're not on video, you're going to be bagging groceries and you're going to be looking at less experienced agents, not as skilled, making a lot more money. You're going to be like, damn it, I should have listened to Nick and just started shooting video, Right? I'm sure you probably see it now. There are agents, yeah. not that skilled, not that great, but they're on video and they're probably getting some listings. You're like, what the hell is happening here? Because the, I think Inman came out with a stat, over 80% of people are going to choose a real estate agent based on video. The reason being is during COVID and all that stuff that was happening, everybody stayed inside. So we were forced to make buying decisions online. We were forced to trust online. We didn't have an option that carried over into real estate. And now I'm, I'm, my buying decision is going off, I'm online. That's what's carrying over guys. As far as the interviews go, I highly recommend you schedule two to three months out. Just literally get two, like one to two people a week and just get them in the calendar. Take, one, take 20 minutes to reach out to 10 or 15 different people and just say like, hey, I'd like to interview. I have this time or this time, which one works best for you? Get the interview scheduled and get them in the calendar because it's very easy to fall out of that habit and not be consistent. But I'll tell you what, with interviews, I show up to interviews. Why? Because I took somebody else's time. I'm going to make sure I respect it. 
schedule them out in advance. You're going to thank yourself later. You're going to get in a good habit. And once you get going, it becomes really easy. I look forward to all the interviews, but I know getting started is the hard part, right? I like, I like to say, it's like going to the gym with somebody. I might not want to go to the gym, but I know my brother doesn't want to go either. And he's up right now moving around. So I'm not going to let him down. Mm-hmm. Great good. question there, Sean. Why don't you go ahead and call on somebody else here? Real quick, Sandra, do you have a question, Sandra? I do have a question. With the interviews, are you doing it via Zoom or are you doing, going in person to do the interviews? Yeah, great question. So I, I utilize StreamYard. StreamYard allows me to uh, have like two people on the screen, no matter where they're at or three or four or five or six. Um, It's very similar to the way Zoom is set up too. It's extremely user-friendly, which is why I like it. Um, But I recommend using StreamYard because then you can stream to multiple different people. um, uh, Well, multiple different platforms. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem at all. Guys, this is your time. I'm here to provide value to you guys. So if you guys have a question, now is the time to ask. Can you share, Nick, real quick, um, just the power of like, even like a lead comes in and sending them a personal video? Oh, man, I'll tell you what, that personal video. So when I was running a call center, um, once upon a time, I was calling 15 hours a day. And then I started managing about 70 different clients running this call center. So I got to play with leads a lot in the back end. And I'll tell you what, it was never the type of lead. It was never how long we were calling. It was never the area, the caller or the agent. It was always the brand. And if they knew them before they walked in the door. If I was calling and saying, hey, I'm calling on behalf of Nick. Oh, Nick, what's going on? Yeah, I know him. Or, hey, I'm calling on behalf of Nick. Who the heck's Nick? I could read them their social security number. And they'd still say, that, that wasn't me. I didn't fill that out. Right? But what happens is the moment you hang up the phone, sending out a video text, a personal video text, there are two things you do in this video text. Always say their first name. Always, always, always say their first name. If you don't say their first name, they're going to think it's a sales gimmick. And you're actually going to lose rapport. You're like, oh, this salesman just sends this to everybody. And they're like, ah, screw them. All right, use car salesman. Rah. But you say their first name and it's like, oh, crap, that was just to me. And guess what? I'll tell you what, the people who have hung up on me that have cussed me out. Well, look, if you're on the phone for 15 hours a day, it's going to happen. When I sent them that personal video message, guess what happened a week later? They cussed everybody out. They didn't want to talk to anybody. But a week later, they still needed a real estate agent. And they went through their phone. They didn't recognize any number, but they saw that video and they called me back. I got a lot of callbacks by doing that. Always, 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 always send a video message every time you hang up the phone with somebody that you haven't met yet in person. It will change your relationship instantly. Because chances are, guess what? We're not the only real estate agent that they're talking to. There's somebody else. There's like four other people, right? Then they forgot what conversations they had, who they were talking to, but one person sent a video message. And now they have a face in the name. They feel like they know you already. Now you're coming over and they're peeking through the window. The person who didn't send a video message is like, is that Jeff? I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't look like his picture. That was from 20 years ago, right? <laughs> but now Jeff sent a video. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. I don't, I'm not calling you out. Just, <laughs> I, I don't look that like I did 20 years ago. So. Right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but now Jeff sent a video. They're looking out the window like, oh, Jeff, what's going on? You're going to start noticing people are opening their doors. They're waiting for you. It creates, it almost creates the closest thing to a referral without being one because they feel like they already know you. That video message is super, super powerful. And I'll tell you what, leads you haven't been able to get in contact with. I had, I had thousands of old leads, three, five years old that just never picked up. So I just started messing around with them, right? Like in a good way. So I'd send them a video message and I wasn't even the agent. I was just uh, ISA and I was the guy managing them. Hey, what's going on, Jeff? You know, we just sold a home nearby, like down the street from you guys. You know what? It made me think of you. How's your family going? We started getting reach outs all the time. Where are you guys at in the process? I'd always say, hey, we j- hey Jeff, we just sold a home right down the street from you. And it made me think of you. Where are you guys at in the process? When you say a personal video message and it made me think of you, you're like, ah, oh, shit. I feel like I have to respond. Because everybody likes to assume that they're a good person, right? So if somebody takes the time to send a video message personally to me, you're going to get a response and reignite conversations. It's a great way, especially if you don't have time, because I know like when we're going on these buyer appointments, when a buyer's 10 minutes late, go to your phone and send out five video messages. They're 10 to 15 seconds. As long as you don't watch them, you can knock these out fast, right? Video messages are key. The two things you always do is always say their first name and never watch it before you send it. 
watch before you send it. You're going to shoot that video message 10 to 15 times. Shoot. Is it, they're, they're quick and they're easy. And I'll tell you what, and I'm, I'm just seeing the payoff on that. Like that's just been a that? huge thing for me to do. Mike, yeah. go ahead. Nick, how do you do that? And also do you use any editing software with videos that's user friendly? Um, I don't edit my videos really. Mm. Um, when, when it comes down to chopping them up and putting them in one minute clips, that's different. I go live all the time. No filters, no nothing. Um, or like edits on the videos. I, I don't, I don't personally believe in doing high edited videos. Um, because it doesn't allow you to act with speed. Speed beats anything else. Speed, dude, speed wins. Speed to lead. Right. I mean, I've got shared leads, so I've got to get to it as soon as possible. Right. So do you have an iPhone? Yes. Oh, man, you, my man. All right, so here's what you're going to do, right? Apple everything. Apple, Apple everything. Blue. Right. Woo, let's go, <laughs> Team Blue. All right, so here's what you're going to do. Op go to the text. Go to the text, right? Let me know when you have that open. Yeah. All right, just click on somebody. I'm not going to have you send it, but just click on somebody's text thread. Yeah. You see in the bottom left, a camera. Got it. Video. Click that, and then video. And then literally, after you're done, you just click send, and you're good to go. Nice. Yep, it's that simple. Android, yours is somewhere else. It's different on every single one. Can't help you there, guys. Thanks, yeah, no, it, re it really is different. Like, as long as you guys just shoot a video and send it, you're good to go. Don't overcomplicate this. Don't go buy a software that says, hey, you can send a video message through our software. I can do it through my damn phone, right? You don't need to go out and buy anything for this. You don't need to buy headphones. You don't need to buy speakers, uh, lighting. It's actually better if you're not sitting in your studio, if you're getting out of the car. Because they're like, man, Tara was so busy. They still sent me a video message. But I'll tell you what, you're sitting in a video, you're sitting in a studio. Imagine if I shot a video like this with my, my nice camera up here, my microphone. I'm like, hey, Jeff, you know, I was just thinking about you, man. You're like, you fucking weren't. You're sitting in your studio, <laughs> lights on, ready to go. You're like, you weren't just thinking about me. You are, you're not doing this out of your heart. You're doing this for a reason. But if I'm just getting out of the gym, I'm like, man, Jeff, I just wanted to follow up with you, man. I was just thinking about you. I just want to see how you're doing it. If there's anything I could do to help. Talk to you later. You're like, damn, he was busy, and he literally just thought of me on the spot. If you're out, you're walking, um, you're getting out of the car, you're getting into the car, you're walking into a building, walking into your house, and you shoot it on the walk, even a little shaky, they're going to be like, dang, they really just wanted to talk to me. You create a, a more of a relationship. And again, I think with that, you're, you're, you're doing something that no other, there, no other realtor is doing this stuff. You yeah. just make yourself stand out because they're not just talking to you. They haven't decided yet who they're going to work with. Right. They might be several months away, but you're doing that again, just creating that rapport. And there's something about that video and yeah. that connection. It's different than an email. It's different than just a cold text. They're getting texts from everybody. They're getting emails from everybody. They're on five different websites looking at homes. Whatever. But all of a sudden you start doing that and you connect with them. Right. They're, they're working with Mike. I got to call Mike. Mike's the guy. You, know, they, you just connect with them in that way. And you set yourself apart from everybody else out there. That's what I'm seeing with it. It's just, it's just gold, you know? And, and so. if you want to be really ballsy but have a great payoff, hit that FaceTime button, guys. I'll tell you what. They're going to be like, wait, what? They're like, yo, what, what's going on? It throws people off. I'll tell you what, you want to get some answers? Face down some people. You'll have instant rapport. They see you right away. No other agent is going to be doing that. I'll tell you what, when someone FaceTimes me, I'm like, oh, okay, we're, we're friend friends, right? Like when somebody FaceTimes me, it's like, oh, you're on a different level. You have an instant relationship built. They're sitting there like, whoa, whoa, what's going on? Do I know you? Yeah, no, I'm just a real estate agent. You sign up for our leads. I just want to call and see how's it going on. But here's the thing. When people don't see you on the phone, they'll hang up. When they see you, they're like, oh, I can't, I can't do it to them, right? Like, all right, what do you got for me, right? Because they see your face. They're like, oh, man, you know, just, uh, let's see. Kim looks like such a nice woman. Now, I can't just hang up on Kim. I can't say mean things to Kim, right? <laughs> when, when they're on the phone, they just imagine you in the worst way possible. Some old dude sitting in a corner eating Cheetos on his phone that's doing dials all day. Like, oh, man, this guy needs to get a life. Oh, I'm just going <laughs> to hang up on him because he deserves it. No, that's not going to happen. You want to hang up on me if you see my face. Most people won't, actually. I'll tell you, that's a great way to catch people off guard. You'll get real answers, too. Because when we're on the phone, we have those RDRs. 
Those things that we just say, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Make it fast. When you're on the phone, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, man, I'm doing good. I'm just, uh, you know, hanging out at the house because I don't know what to say. You shouldn't be FaceTiming me, so I'm going to give you the real answer. So it's a great way to catch people off guard and get some great conversations too. Who here is going to FaceTime a client this week? Come on now. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Sean was the last one. Sean, you want to pick somebody? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's pick on Mr. Tim. Mr. Tim. Come on live, Mr. Tim. I felt that coming, brother. Come on down. <laughs> I know you did. I saw you staring at me. In fact, I'm shocked my <laughs> daughter didn't do it. Oh, that's Tim great. started to do more videos. You, you posted that last week about, you know, with clients and stuff and be able to send yeah. us a video. It's yeah, I've, I've started doing them. I, I'm not doing as many as I need to. Um, back to the original questions, I'd yeah. like some topics to follow. Yeah. I'm not afraid to do them. I, I just need to think of uh, what to do. Um, I've started doing, I do a lot of attraction with eXp Realty. So um, 40 to 50% of the people will will blow off an initial meeting. But I've started doing a video call just saying, hey, man, I'm so looking forward to seeing you this yeah. afternoon at three. Hope your day's going great. We'll talk soon. Yeah. And I don't read it. I mean, I don't watch it. I just send yeah. it. It's all good. And no shows are almost non-existent. Worst case, they're responding back saying, yeah, I've been meaning to call you. I need to reschedule to tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so that's that's huge. That definitely works, guys. In your real estate business, I, I'm, I'm excited to try that in the real estate side, too. Yeah. And I love the FaceTime idea. Yeah, but man. The, the only other question I had is, all right, I've got a video now. What I do with it? When, when you're talking to real estate agents, um, do I post it to my story? Do I post it on my page? You know, and, and I know that there's probably some stupid, easy answers to that, but I haven't done a whole lot of it to now. The easiest answer is just post it everywhere. I post things on my stories, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, like anywhere that I can post a video, I'm posting it, right? Because here's the thing, you never know where your next buyer is. You never know where your next seller is, right? I used to think, I don't listen to podcasts. I know that's freaking crazy because I do a lot of podcasting now. But at the time, I wasn't doing podcasting because I'm like, oh, if I don't listen to them, nobody does. Who here listening to podcasts? Yeah, a lot of people do. So, you know, just because I'm not on there doesn't mean my next buyer or seller isn't, right? Post it, share it, put it everywhere you can. Is there a tool that'll do that for you other than StreamYard that you talked about? Because that sounded like that's only three places. Uh, face, Facebook Manager. Facebook Manager has like a back end that you could post it through. Um, HubSpot is a lot, allows you to do that as well. Oh, I forgot about Tim. Mobile. If you, uh, you know, if you do StreamYard, where you know, it, where because it, it automatically when you're done, you know, it's you know, you do a live video, and it goes to Facebook. You can and you can pick it. You don't have to do all three. I do all three. So, you know, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. It right, goes right. live. Once I do that, you know, it's it's on my timeline. But now it's it's actually in my YouTube channel. It's just it's on there. I could take that YouTube link now and I can post it. I take that and I post it over, you know, I could post it on on all these other platforms, that link. I could and I can share that link. I can use that now as many times as I want. You know, I've got a broker back in Indianapolis. I was sharing this with Nick that I've been working with. You know, he's looking to make the move to EXP. You know, I sent him an interview. Um, yes, yeah, just yesterday, I sent him an interview that I did with Mitch Reebok, you know, like two months ago, I sent him that yesterday, he replied back last night. I mean, he's, you know, he watched it, loved it all fired up. But again, that's something I did two months ago. That's the beauty of the videos, you know, it's like the lifespan of these things, I could mm -hmm. just be sending things out to different agents, different clients, different yeah. all kinds of stuff you can use those videos for. But you'll have it in just, you know, my YouTube channel is just archived there. You know, and, and whatever it's so, you know, any of the videos you do, there's a place you have a link there now that you can share with in all different kinds of ways, you know, and like with real estate clients, you know, as you're doing videos again, like, like what he said before, like with Tara, you know, top, you know, pick some top three things that buy top three mistakes buyers make when they're buying a home top five things that sellers need to do to get more money for, for the, the sale of their home, you know, top three, this top five, that all those kind of things. And you yeah. just do a, do a quick video. You know, and you put it, you could do that on your phone and upload that video into YouTube or whatever. And now take that link and you can share it on all different kinds of platforms and, and use it again and again and again. You get a, you know, a potential seller lead that comes in. They want an evaluation on their house. 
send them the evaluation on your house. And then the next day, maybe send them, hey, I, you know, real quick, I did this video a couple of months ago, top five things to help you get more money for your house. Hope this is helpful. And just yep. send that out. All of a sudden now you're adding this value, but there's this video that you did, you know? So I got a question. Put that back up. Oh, sorry. Who do we got here? Sorry. Right. Nick, could you just throw that screen back up for me and TJ can ask this question? Absolutely. Thank you. I'll start here. Presentation. Yeah. Nick, I got a question about um, doing, I just lost the term, um, but like a, a series of videos. Right. Um, I mean, I guess the, the one thing that came to mind is, um, you know, like uh, if it's once a week or a couple times a week where you're talking about the process that we go through from start to finish on, um, you know, a real estate transaction or it, especially like a listing um you know because I'm, I'm a listing specialist so yeah. if i talk about the process about you know our initial meeting discuss about things that we maybe want to do to the house before we list it uh talk about price talk about uh, the process of getting under contract and going through inspections and appraisals is it cool to do um just like a series like that and how would you put it together if so great 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 question yes series are great and here's what I would do. You're a listing specialist. So I'm sure you have a lot of stories that are behind it, right? Sure. What, I, what, what would work really well and get engagement if we give people all logic? Look, logic is great, but let's be honest. People come to social media because they're lazy and bored. Lazy and bored people don't want to learn. They want to hear stories. So right. th think about a time why you have this in the process. Man, there was this one time I was working with this seller and they did da 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 and you cover the story and the problem on how it didn't help. And here's what we do now. Guys, you want to make sure that you work with an expert that's going to make sure that you avoid pitfalls. Or maybe I was working with the buyer in this house. It wasn't for, like it wasn't uh, put together. Had pictures all over the wall. The family was everywhere. My buyer couldn't even imagine themselves in the home. That's why you work with an expert. We're not going to do that for you. If you want to work with an expert, go here. Tell gotcha. a story. If you can identify a problem and think of a story, then you can just make it fun and just tell a story about what happened one day in real estate. Right. right. And then you would tie it to your 15, like I said, 85% problem, 15% solution. You can tell a story, man, story sell. I so like I, lo I love this series idea. And just think about that. Like, all right, so this is what I do now. Can I think of a time when somebody didn't do this and what it looked like? Like, oh my gosh. So there was this one time and that keeps you on track. Cause when you're telling a story, it keeps you on track and you know exactly what you're talking about too. I got it. I like it. Does that make sense, TJ? Yep. Thanks. Awesome. I went, I went in a house. I went in a house one time and they, they kept a horse in the house. I'm not kidding. There's a story. There's a story for you, TJ. If you want a story, you can interview me. I'll do it. I'll do it. Well, that was another thing I was just thinking of is if you don't know a story, make one up. I mean, <laughs> I'm not making that up though. <laughs> you know, I, and that's like, what is that smell? That oh my God. They keep a horse like, in here. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It was like, <laughs> I think, anyway. I think that you could, though. I mean, my you, first year in real estate, like, what the hell have I done? Oh, my God. Maybe I need a new career. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, so well, you guys, it's about 10 o'clock. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like, you yeah, you want to wrap things up here? Topic too, you could even just say, hey, I read this story online, and here's what happened with the seller. Right? So, you could do that. Um, here's what I would say, too. As far as posting, this is the biggest, mis the biggest mistake. Every, every agent in the freaking world does this and they're doing it all wrong. So we all know that like people pay Zillow and like, oh yeah, Zillow makes their money that way, right? That's not the way they really make their money. Yeah, do we pay them in ads and do all these things? Absolutely. But get this, when you post just sold or just bought and a picture of the home, you are literally telling people, choose the home and pick the realtor out of a hat. Right, because when you post the pics, the house, the house is the most important thing. All people do is post homes all over their timeline. We're training people to say this is the most important part of the ad deal. Instead, when you sell a home or help someone in a buy, stand outside the home and shoot a video and tell people what you had to do to help this family. If you do that, people will start choosing you. Home's important. Don't get me wrong, but here's what I had to do to fight off thirty freaking offers. Stay up late, do these things to make sure the family got in their home. If you want to get a home in this market, you got to work with me. You keep posting pictures, they're going to go to the place that has pictures and realtors picking out of a hat. If nobody went there because they didn't know, the, they, they knew that the agent was a person that was going to get them in a home, 
they would just go to the agents. But we trained them to go to the lead source, which then we buy back the leads. So we got to retrain the industry. We got to retrain the consumers. Post about what you did, not about the home. Does that make sense to everybody? That's good stuff right there. Yep. And I, by the way, I just did that last weekend under contract in two days. Yep. I should stand out in front of that home and do a video about yes. what we had to go. Cause it was, you know, it's a pain in the yes. neck right now, whether you're working with a seller or a buyer, you know, absolutely. Stand up I got, there I got one video. more, one more. And it's just too good not to give these guys, Jeff. Yeah, I, go I ahead, go. Them, right? You're the good, best man. closing gift. This doesn't have to do with content. This is the best closing gift that I've ever heard. All right, guys. So I've heard a lot of the good ones in the past and I wanted to tell you about it, but this one in particular was freaking genius. So what they did is when the home closes, you know, working with the buyer, the home closes, they bring the photographer back over and they take a family picture in front of the house and they put their logo in the corner. Cause I'll tell you what, I don't know about you guys, but taking a family picture was freaking hard growing up. There's a good chance. We never, we never even got around to it from like 10 to when I was like 25. Cause we were all so busy moving around. But at that moment, everybody's in that area. You take a family picture. They're going to put that right on the mantle. Everybody that walks in the house, is going to take a look at their family picture. Like, oh, that's such a nice picture. And guess whose logo they're going to see? Yours. And guess what happens? Every time that mom or dad or whatever looks at that picture, they're going to think of you. Every freaking, and they're going to look at it once, twice, three times a week. I don't know about you guys. My mom would probably look at that every day. Every day they come in and they would think of that individual that took it. Don't overblow the logo because they're going to remember you. Just put it tastefully enough in the corner. Every person that walks in the house is going to bring that picture up. Like, oh, actually, this real estate agent did this for me. No way. Dude, I seen it work, and I was like, holy crap, that's freaking genius. I actually did An agent didn't tell me that. I walked into somebody I knew's house. And I saw that whole thing happen. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so good. Because they just started talking about this agent. I'm like, that is freaking genius. I don't know who this person is. But they better be a millionaire because that's a freaking great idea. That's good. But I would do that for a closing gift. That's good, good stuff. So, guys, hopefully this was helpful. Yeah? Good stuff? Good, good. Absolutely. Lots of ways to do it. I would tell you guys, get, get past the fear of doing it. Because, yeah. again, you know, I don't know what there's that quote. What, you know, do the thing you fear the most and the death of fear is certain. Well, you know, the, 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 everything is scary when you first started. That first listing appointment I went in on, oh my God, you know, I was terrified, you know, but then the next one is a little bit easier by the 20th one. You're not even thinking about it, you're doing your sleep. And it's how it is with everything. It's like you get better and better the more you do it. Just get started. Just get doing it because it will pay off. And I think you're right, Nick. Like five years from now, I think people who aren't doing video, it's, I'm telling you, you're going to get left in the dust because everything's going that direction, you know, and it's just once you get started, like I, I honestly just started doing it a couple of months ago. I'm still learning as I'm doing it. And, and Nick, I appreciate all your help with it. Um, but but man, it's just it's getting better and better, easier and easier. I've got the podcast thing going now. I never thought I would do that. I'm, I'm getting traction there. It's just there's so many ways that you can just use the same content over and over and over and create all these different platforms that will work for you for years. You know, and, and there's power in that right now, you know, and, and what that's doing and where that's going to pay off over time. So yeah. anyway, yeah. good stuff. You bring up a great point. You know, just because we made it this far with, without using video, you will not make it past the next five years if you don't get on video. Yeah. You literally yeah. will not make it. I don't care about your track record, how many calls you make, what you're doing. You will not make it in the next five years if you don't get on video. That's, I mean, dude, 80% of people are going to choose their, vid their real estate agent based on video. You want to fight over the 20% who refuse to go on video? And you know how many of them they're going to be. Is that where you want to live? Fighting, scrounging over 20% of the business. And that number is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. I get it. Maybe you, you haven't shot video in the past and you're still doing pretty good in business. It ain't happening this time. The industry and the world changed forever after that, after what happened these last couple of years. Tomorrow might go be going back to the normal, new normal or whatever. But when business makes advancements, it does not go back. And we made advancements and that's video. We're not going back. Get on video, guys. Cool. Well, guys, thank you very much. Just a reminder, we'll be back here next week, same time. Okay, um, same new ID. Um, we worked it this time. I did it right this time. Last week was <laughs> was crazy. So, anyway, guys, thank you very much, Nick. Thank you again. Yeah. Appreciate it. I know you're super busy, man. Appreciate your time jumping on here. Um, Absolutely, man. Great, great stuff. So, guys, thank have a great day. Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. Okay, reach out anytime with any questions. All right.